things, let's go. That's it. Love you guys. Let's go. Gang on me, gang on three. One, two, three. Gang. The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea, with a rollicking song he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. His face is weather-beaten, he wears a hooded sash, with a silver hat about his head, and a bristling black mustache. He growls as he storms the country, a villain big and bold, and the trees all shake and quiver and quake as he robs them of their gold. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. Isn't it crazy how the team got worse every year under fired head coach Josh McDaniels? First you have the playoff team in 2021. Then in 2022, McDaniels runs the team into a 6-11 record with all those one-score losses. A good portion of those one-score losses were shootouts, so it was at least exciting before the result. Then at the beginning of this season, McDaniels had the team in the worst way they can be. They were losing and boring. Legendary Raiders owner Al Davis had a certain brand of football that wasn't boring and McDaniels brought over the Patriot way. The Patriot way failed with the Raiders because I believe every franchise has a certain spirit that allows it to win a certain way. Example, when the New York Giants are great, it's because of the defense and the ability to get to the quarterback. See Michael Strahan and Lawrence Taylor. The Raiders have their way too, but McDaniel's way couldn't be any further from it. Now there's Antonio Pierce who was a Raider fan growing up in Compton in the 80s. He knows what Raider football is and wants to bring it back. There are a couple of things he brought back in game one. Number one is the quarterback has to go down, he has to go down hard. Making the quarterback go down hard will get you a flag, so you have to settle for the quarterback going down period, which is what Max Crosby does here on this loop. Here, Giants quarterback Daniel Jones blows out his knee trying to hurry up and get out of the pocket, away from the pressure. That sack number two going to Malcolm Coons. Now watch this inside move by Adam Butler. Ultimately, he's going to share this sack with Crosby. Here, Jones thinks he's going to get the corner on Crosby. But he goes out of bounds for minus yards in the sack. Here, the whole defensive line is going to chase Jones around until Bilal Nichols cleans it up. Here we have linebacker Robert Spillane and edge rusher Tyree Wilson combining for one. Here linebacker Amari Bernie is going to come on the blitz so Butler can clean up. And here safety Trayvon Merrick is going to come on the blitz. And that's sack number eight. It's good to see the Raiders sacking the quarterback again. And when the Raiders weren't sacking the quarterback, they were pressuring him into bad throws. Here, a quarterback hit by Crosby sets up a pass defense by Jacorian Bennett. And this pressure by Crosby almost gets the Raiders a turnover. Speaking of turnovers, the Raiders got a couple of those on the day, but Marcus Peters misses an opportunity for one here. He usually catches those. His hands are off this year. Amik Robertson's hands aren't off though. He gets the second interception of the season here. Slot corner Nate the natural Hobbs on the tip drill. It's nice to see the Raiders getting turnovers again too. I'm not seeing the traditional press man I'm used to seeing the Raiders play this year, but they are getting their hands on a lot of footballs.
the traditional grind em out running game is back. Some adjustments were made to get running back Josh Jacobs going again. The running game is more consistent now and not as many carries for minus yards. Of course, those big chunks are coming. I know this one doesn't count because of the flag, but I love the vision and the ability to bounce it outside. Look at the vision and the patience here. Do all those runs set up? The bomb, the number one Raider staple. How about this out of play action? Let's look at this from another view so we can see the speed of Trey Tucker. Here they're gonna miss. Maybe there's some kind of miscommunication here. That's okay. You keep throwing those and opposing defenses can't crowd the box. I think Tucker should be out there with Adams more than Jacoby Myers. And when they're all out there together, Tucker should be outside and Myers should be in the slot. That way the safety isn't so quick to run over and help on Adams. See Myers on the bottom of the screen? He's not going to outrun anyone, so there's no reason to worry about him. Having Tucker speed out there would open things up for Adams. Alright, this team is the outfit gym. Jam Kelly and Pierce were given, so they're just trying to do the best with what they have. But they already seem to have brought back a couple of staples from those old great Raider teams. They got the running game going with 125 yards and 3 touchdowns. Jacobs had 98 of those yards and 2 of those touchdowns. And off of that, they threw deep out of play action. They didn't have to do too much of that because they were up big in the game, but it was good to see. It was also good to see them get 8 sacks and 2 turnovers. I know room wasn't built in the day, but at least they got a couple of those old Raider staples back. Thank you for watching. See you next time.